This is Reef Beef Podcast, a casual discussion about reef keeping topics for experienced reefers and unexperienced reefers. Uh, we use language that one would use in a bar or in a uh, more, more accurately in a discussion that's happening after a conference in a lobby bar. So if you don't like that, that's that's something you just need to be aware of. And um, it's totally safe for kids, though, because kids know all these words. So if you're worried about your kids, you should basically take headphones and put them on them and tape them on the kid and then play this podcast for them. This is Reef Beef. Hello, my name is Richard. And my name is Bennard. And today on the Reef Beef Podcast, we have got our friend Aaron is here. He's back to tell us more of his QT journey. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we'll get to that. We're going to talk about some other stuff going on. And we uh, this episode is brought to you by saltwateraquarium.com and Champion Lighting and Supply and powered by Polyp Lab. Welcome to the Beef of Reef. Ben, welcome. Aaron, welcome. I'm so glad you're Thanks here. Thanks for having me. We, we had you on, Aaron, a million years ago, not a million years ago, uh, episode 27. That's back when we could leave the house. And now we can leave the house again, I think. It's kind of magical. Uh, and we learned all about your tank, and we'll get more to that in a couple of minutes. This episode, mostly with Aaron, will be about catching up with Aaron. Uh, and then we have a practical thing we're going to get to, too. So, in short, Ben, is there anything we want to follow up on? Oh, totally for me. So a couple episodes ago, I was talking about my favorite fish that I like to put in reef tanks. And I was uninformed about the difference between a school and a shoal. And I did a little reading in my little books. And I found out that a shoal is basically just a grouping of fish doesn't even have to be the same type that are just loosely hanging out. And a school is all a specific type of fish that are moving at the same speed in the same direction. And, you know, sort of like you'd see crows in the, or birds in the sky, like moving and undulating. That's more like a school, where a shoal is just a bunch of a group of random fish chilling out. Yeah. And we were talking about that because we were talking about if you get schools or shoals in reef aquariums. And I think I said, no, you, you don't. Unless they're, yeah, it, uh, you might at first when they're scared, and then that goes away very quickly. So everyone should put sharks in their reef tanks, no matter what the size. Pico reef, you should get a shark. Or just, just have a frayed lamp cord or maybe a torch and just make those fish understand that there's constant <laughs> danger around the corner. Constant danger. Um, ben, what's going on? Well, anything going on with your clients? Anything or your home tanks or anything you want to catch us up on? Uh, oh, there was a quick thing. And I'll, we'll show some pictures right here. Because I had a curious thing happen. I have a, in most of the clients where we can make water on site that I'm doing that so I don't have to tote all this water around. And this one client had construction crews on his street, opening up the street for weeks on end, um, messing with the, the main water supply or something like that. Well, I went to mess with his RO unit last visit and I couldn't get any sort of pressure. And I huh. got to where I was undoing lines and blowing through stuff and, you know, spraying water everywhere. And I finally just got to the uh, um, the RO membrane when I, you know, I took it out and I pulled it out. Well, you know, normally, uh, how do I describe that? Normally, a, a RO membrane, you know, it's wound up on itself and it, it sits, you know, flat. It's, it's like a cinnamon roll. It's a it's a roll bun. It's wrapped up. And it's yeah. all even, so everything moves through it at a consistent pressure. Well, this had been pushed. It had to have been through pressure, but ah. pushed so one side of it was concave and the other side was convex, like the whole roll had somehow been pushed. And the interesting thing, it, it was pushed away from the incoming water line going to it. Now, I know that RO units can hold, you know, I don't know, 100, 150 PSI of pressure. Uh, nothing was leaking when I walked up to it, but I had to, you know, replace all the elements and replace that thing, you know, and the client didn't care because, I mean, it's not like any of it was that expensive, but that's the, I mean, 25 years I've been messing with RODI units. I've never seen an RO membrane pushed in that manner. And, and I just assume it had to have been 
from that construction that was going on on their road. Yeah, maybe they did a pressure test on the lines too. So really kicked it up. So I wonder, you know, if anyone's watching this, if anyone has had a similar issue, let me know because that for me, that was exceedingly rare. And I mess with RO units all the time for decades. Just never seen that. Interesting. Cool. Uh, I got two things. One is kind of like that. Uh, of course, I always love to talk about my calcium reactor and problems I have with the calcium reactor. I was uh, I was having weird, the pH wasn't staying level in the calcium reactor. And I went through and did exactly what you were saying. I started blowing through everything going, what's wrong? I changed the tank out. Same problem with a brand new tank. Finally, uh, tracked it down to the check valve. So there's a check valve between the CO2 regulator and the uh, and the tank where the where and the reactor where the CO2 bubbles in. If that's not there, the water from the from the uh, reactor can be pushed all the way back into the regulator. Uh, it just turns out that uh, check valves can go bad. So have a backup check valve and check it once in a while. Is that that fancy nice, well, fancy nice check valve that comes with that uh, carbon doser? I don't know. I, my carbon doser came from a, a, was being thrown away from a facility uh, that throws away lots of things and I took them home. So I don't know about that. It was the metal inline one, okay. which I assume over time is probably not so great. Uh, I've replaced it with a plastic one and I got a new plastic one that I keep um I'm going to keep taped to the regulator so it's right there. And then uh, I tried to get a Springer's Damsel based on the show oh. where we talked about fish. Uh, I also got a little uh, um, uh, from Fiji, a Fiji uh, rabbit fish. Oopsie, I think it's called. UPSI. And I also got a tiny African uh, hippo tang because I've never kept one of those I'm ever in my it. life. Really? Uh and, Wait, and, the, last time I talked to you, you were sort of like mad at fish. Yeah, because I want them to die. It turned out I lost a couple fish, so it worked out. And I caught out my big... Knife, they're all fucking dying. We'll get to you in a minute. Uh, <laughs> we pulled all the... Uh, I pulled the big rabbit fish out, too. So. Oh, good. They, they, we'll talk about this on another episode about weirdness going on in that tank. Remember I was saying there's no coralline in that tank or there was a coralline issue? Mm -hmm. In this one up here, behind me on the right, it's just chock full of coralline. It's the same system. So something totally local to the body of, to the box of water. Uh, so I went to get a Springer uh, damsel. Is that right? Springers. Is that what we're talking Springer about? Springer eye. Springer eye. And I was looking at them at the store and I was like, those don't look like Springer eyes. Those just look like fucking blue damsels. Really? Like, this is not right. And I looked it up. And I went, this is not right. And I went over, this is Carson at the aquatic collection. And I was like, Hey, those are Mark Springers. I don't think they're Springers. And he said, they should be. And he walked over. He goes, oh, those are not Springers. Okay. Oh, so <laughs> that could suck. So I tried. So I didn't want to get some random damsel. Uh, I wanted a Springers. You should just stop talking. Yes, that's always the best. Ben. Richard. Have you ordered anything from saltwateraquarium.com this week? If you haven't, you must lie. I have. I've ordered everything they had in stock and had it delivered to my house and then returned it immediately. And they were so gracious with all the returns. Saltwateraquarium.com has been our long-term sponsor. We've been buying stuff from them since before the show existed. We like them very much. They have an app. Ooh, Ooh. look at, on that app. It's got things for sale. And there's a, you know, it's, 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 I like that company because they are big enough uh, to have everything we want at good prices. And they are small enough that uh, you still can end up talking to people. So uh, they're great. They got uh, easy shipping. They've got three spots around the country that they ship from. So if I order at like 11 o'clock, it's often shipped the same day. Ben, what do you have to say about saltwateraquarium.com? I like that they have in-house livestock. They have, they keep a lot of ocean reefs and aquarium ORA stuff. And they have in-house cleanup crews. I think that's hunky dory. Hunky dory. They've also got a lot of avenues that you could uh, get some kind of uh, helpful information if you need it right now. They've got you can text them and they will answer and they know stuff. You can send them emails and they'll know stuff. They've got a Facebook group. They've got Mark Callahan is saying Mark Callahan kinds of things that you can ask information from. Uh, so yeah. 
saltwateraquarium.com. Check them out. Ben, what is their website if people wanted to go to saltwateraquarium.com? It is saltwateraquarium.com. But listen, here's the most important thing. When you go to their website, use our URL down below. So you go to them via us through the internet tubes. Yeah, so check them out, saltwateraquarium.com. You should just stop talking. Yes, that's always the best. Uh, I wanted to talk about manually removing algae. We all talk about, you know, you are you are the biggest herbivore. I want to hear from you guys, and I'll end at the end. Uh, what what are your quick tips? Uh, so go either one of you. What what uh, what do you what do you Aaron. do for manually removing algae? I'm in. So I had zero algae problems until I went to the uh, High Tide Aquatics meetup, Rich, where you gave a talk on algae. And yeah. All of a sudden, I started getting hair algae. Like two days later, <laughs> it's not a joke. Uh, but yeah, no, I more or less just did what you guys talked about. Didn't do too many crazy things, but I just got in there with like, you guys ever buy anything from Battle Corals, and they send you a little scrubby brush. So he sends Adam sends you a little toothbrush thingy that has. Uh, longer bristles on one side and then super short ones on the other side. That's a pretty damn good scrubbing tool. So I just have a handful of those throughout the year. So I literally would just get, um, you know, a disposable cup or whatever, pull out whatever tufts I could and just scrub the shit out of the rocks with the, the, the toothbrush thing and just gave it three or four weeks. And eventually like it kind of got back to normal threw in some uh, tuxedo urchins, you know, from Vossen and like, yeah, we're, we're back. We're back in business. So that was it. Awesome. How did you, yeah, so did you just pull it out with your, just pull it out with your fingers? Yeah. I texted you about it. Remember when you recommended, I get that little uh, canister thingy, the Marine land, the polish filter. Yeah. I had that on there for a day or so until the suction cup slid down and I was like, so I just yanked it, but I've got the filter floss, the, the filter roller in the thing. And I would just kick up the MP forties on like nutrient mode to try to get everything out the overflow that I wasn't able to manually just grab. But yeah, just boring, nothing too exciting to report. Okay. Just scrub the shit out of it and get the things out. And then after that, I put in, you know, urchins and all that kind of jazz to keep it to where I'd manicure it to. And that was it. Nothing magic. Just get wet, shove your arms in there and scrub. Righteous. Ben, any, any interesting ways to manually remove algae? You hippie. I I don't like to scrub algae. I, do, I don't like to scrub it in situ because I don't like all those particles flying off and then the juices from it going in there. So I like to, um, you know, get, a, get some water prepared for a water change. I like to use a small diameter, more rigid, uh, not rigid tubing, but like vinyl instead of silicone like something like maybe half inch or three eighths inch. Maybe something some that green, I can easily. Some green Eheim tubing, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> no, that would be like the 19 millimeter. I don't know the millimeter on that, but, <laughs> but no, I no clear. Cause I'd like to see through it, but I I'll bring the, the smallish diameter tubing up to these tufts of algae, you know, get them sort of sucked in, but not pulling in and then just use my thumb to clip it, you know, pull it. And then I just go through like that. I don't want to scrub it because I'm sort of thinking about fibers that go get off caught in the rock and can continue from there or liquids leaked out when they when they break, you know. So I, I just like to use a, a small diameter vinyl tube that I can suck the hair algae in and then pinch and pull it off and just go at it like that. Righteous. Ever since the, the first time I used the uh, the Reef Beef Marineland filter, that's what we're calling it from now on, uh, I don't I don't at all worry about pieces floating around. I, I left I left big chunks floating around just to see if it would wrap up in all the acros. And in the morning it was all gone. It just I think maybe that might be a mind story, but don't believe me because it's a mind story being countered by a mind story. But to actually remove the stuff, because I've got some bryopsis growing right now. I actually let it grow to be about three quarters of an inch to an inch before I do anything to it. Then, then I try to go in with my hands and just, it really just pulls off. It's, it's algae. It's not, you know, it's, it's not calerpa with all kinds of roots on it. It's just algae and it, and it peels out pretty easily. I also like for places where I can't get my fat fingers in, I use these. 
Can you see those? I don't know if you'll be able to see it. These are self-closing tweezers. So you squeeze them and then they close by themselves and then you can pull the algae. And they come usually in kits for about eight bucks. I just bought a new one, so I'll put the link down below. Um, but this one, you know, you go in, you, you, you snag what you want and you can twist it and then pulls it out. It rips it all out from the substrate and then you dip it in a cup and move along. Um, the other thing that works really well sometimes is I have been known to dump super glue all over the algae, just kind of cover it. And then you just peel the super glue up and most of the algae comes off with it. Like a Brazilian. Then, it's a, yes, a reef beef alien, a, a Johnsonin, a reef Brazilian. I fucking love that so much. I'm going to do a landing strip next time I do it. Uh, and then of course- or a little a little heart, right? Right. Lightning bolt. Um, and then of course you're doing that. So your herbivores can get at the two, the, the delicious shoots rather than the bark, right? The analogy that I use is uh, deer like to eat the leaves. They don't eat the, the branches. Uh, and we get a same kind of effect. I think in algae where they'll eat little stuff, but they won't eat it once it's big. All right. If you listening or watching the show have any, manual removing tips uh, that you think would be very useful besides just your fingers or a tool uh let us know in the comments we'd like to know you should just stop talking yes that's always the best champion lighting and supply.com is a place that beefers go yes and ben champion lighting is bringing in as you know refactory stuff and uh it's automation and it's all standalone and i wanted to see what it's like, right? I, I like to know how things that I don't use are. And I trust Champion Lighting. They're bringing this Reef Factory stuff. And I started, I decided to start with the TDS meter plus. And so it's an inline TDS meter that uh, also has got Wi-Fi communication. So I can sit on my couch and check what my TDS is. So We'll check this out. The link's below. Right, Ben? Anything else exciting to say? We love you, Todd. Thank you. You should just stop talking. Yes, that's always the best. All right, Aaron. Last Yo. time last time you were on the show, you had been reefing for two years, and you had done some QT, and uh, then you were doing – and, and now I know that between then and now, you've done a lot of QT. And since uh, QT is such a thing, I, I, I know you asked if, if we wanted to bring QT experts on the show, but that's exactly the opposite of what I'm interested in. I'm interested in a not dumb person's view on what they've done, why they did it, and what they think about it at the end, right? Because we know experts are going to tell you QT everything forever because that's that's the thing, right? We yeah. need a process. But so so... Fill us in. Tell us what's happened. We'll ask questions along the way and, and where you're at now. You do it in whatever order you think your brain likes. Yeah, I'll give you a kind of like a chronology of the whole situation briefly, and then I'll go into like what I think and why and all the controversial crap. Uh, so long story short, last time when we talked, it's not that controversial. Controversy. But, so last time we talked, you know, I had a smaller tank, et cetera, et cetera. But um, due to my children destroying the room that I'm sitting in, like the last straw was my daughter drew on the carpet with lipstick. And I, I was like, okay, enough. I was like, all right, it's like, I'm going to remodel this room. It looked like the Brady Bunch, right? It had wood paneled walls, just this old shitty room, right? Fucking um, punk rock. It, it was, it was, it wasn't even punk rock. It just looked like shit, right? It looked like the inside of like a 70s hippie van, right? Um, so I remodeled hey. the room, which meant the tank had to go right or at least get to temporarily go and i just you know get the measuring tape and like can i get a bigger tank right that was kind of like the thing so this backfired a little bit i, I picked the cheapest contractor by a mile <laughs> <laughs> so that i could get the biggest tank right which uh it, it's just a facelift right home depot shitty plank flooring you know paint the walls nothing crazy um so i did that and i upgraded to a six foot tank and then all the fish that were kind of like sentimental or hard to get or expensive, et cetera, I kept in the garage in a frag tank I had going at the time. And then a couple, and then the ones that you could just get any other day, 
you know, I just posted on the, the, the local forum, like who wants free fish? This is what I got. Come grab it. Right. People swooped them up all good. So now I was down to like, okay, cool. De demo the room, get a new tank. So I got a six foot tank this time instead of a four footer. And then I was like, all right, let's go let's get it started. Blah, 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 blah. Everything was going fine. I was stocking it up all that shit until I saw like, oh shit, there's spots. Now stocking the tank, you got to re remember is like, I only bought pre-quarantined fish from vendors that like you've heard about, you know, if you're on the humble fish forum and all that kind of shit. I even bought pre-quarantined snails, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but in the past, but this time I was like, I don't want to wait for QT snails. That's just stupid. So I got a QT fish with just normal run of the mill, buy them at the local store, fish and coral. And then eventually I had ink. So that's the beginning. So any questions so far? Okay, so you've had, you've been, you were reefing for two years. You decided my starter tank is over. I want a bigger tank. Yep. Um, ignored all QT thoughts of, completely and just added fish. What? <coughs> <laughs> when you were picking the fish, how did you select the fish? Did you care about disease? Did you see how long they'd been in the tanks? Did you, or did you just buy fish? None of the above. I bought the fish pre-quarantined, but, okay. given, but given the fact that like towards the end of my previous tank, maybe, and just talking to like people, even like QT vendors, honestly, I'd be like, do you quarantine your you know snails and your coral? They're like, no. Like the odds are one in a million, like, you know, blah, 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 blah. Don't bother. So eventually I got comfortable with like the inverts not being quarantined, right? There's one or two places where you could buy, you know, what folks say are QT snails, which is buying from them, et cetera, et cetera, which is a pain in the ass. So this time around, I said, fuck quarantining the inverts. I used to just have a 10 gallon tank, throw a bunch of snails in it and wait, right? Okay. Stop wait. doing that. I want to check our, our quarantine snails much more expensive than non-quarantine snails you know i've never paid attention to the pricing uh just because you know i don't know when i go to the local store i'm looking at the coral and the fish i think what you get turbo snails four for 20 bucks at aquatic collection something like that is that fair i don't know if they're more expensive i, I assume they are right like, I, just, I assume they're 1.5 x the price at least i see an avenue for bullshit like like organic and and stuff like that just like you know yeah. they're like Blue someone's gonna sell you quarantine snails for like way more as a racket it just seems it just seems to me that you need to expect to pay more if you're going to get quarantined anything yeah and, and, and I, that's I imagine, i'm looking up the prices now that's yeah. generally the stumbling block with quarantine stuff is people go why should i get that because it's so much more money uh you know and, and the reason why is because somebody put a bunch of work into it to try to make them better for you. Whether you think that's worth it or not is up to you. I didn't mean to derail us with the, with the pricing. Um, so, yeah, so I got it for you. So 150 bucks for 25 quarantine trochus snails. 150 bucks for 25 snails. 150 yeah. divided by 25 is what? I don't know. I got to calculate. I'm getting worse. $30,000. That's so six bucks a snail. It's a, it's it's more expensive. It's like a buck it's or more two more. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But not ridiculously more expensive, which I think it might be problematic. I think it's got to be ridiculously more expensive because if they're doing it right, it's it's a, it's at least thirty days. But right, so reef cleaners the uh, is four fifty a trochus, and the quarantine dude selling them for six bucks. So it's. Not a massive markup, but when you're getting a hundred of them, you know, you're paying a yeah, hundred more. But okay, quarantine trochus, like, cause that, so that's just assuming that like trophants or whatever from velvet and it, I yep. mean, do they, can they live on on a snail's shell waiting to infect a fish? Got it. Yeah, so the, that's the theory, right? Like, so the theory is when like the the rich is mouthing something along lines mind of story mind story mind story I, well I, theoretically from what i know we can rewind a bit too before i i started drinking this kool-aid a little bit is like theoretically the ick or velvet little bad guy feeding off the fish eventually comes off and insists it can insist on anything hard now a snail's shell is hard 
So is it, it's possible. I buy that. I think scientifically I buy it, but is it likely of all the other real estate that it could settle down on, it settled down on that tiny shelf? I don't know, right? But if you're at a wholesaler where there's a shitload of stuff in one giant system, there's millions of fish going in and out, like the odds can potentially be like not insignificant, right? Yeah. Uh, the, as I've watched in the last five or 10 years, the QT becomes you know, something that people are just recommending more and more and more. I've watched it grow from QT your fish to QT your animals to QT your rock to QT your your plants to, you know, and it's just like, ah, well, why? That's so, so now you can't get an inoculation from somebody else's tank because it's not QT'd. And um, it seems to me um, that it places an undue burden on a new hobbyist and, and makes it people- It totally does crazy i think um so you know oh and, and then you know with with uh with uh, microbiome and eDNA testing which will i think eventually be very helpful but we don't have the background now to really know what we're looking at um you know we'll, as a new person it's all about it's just all a new version of chasing numbers to me and and that's not saying that numbers aren't important, but chasing numbers because you're supposed to chase the numbers instead of developing a saltwater thumb seems like not a good foundation to be building to me. You should just stop talking. Yes, that's always the best. Hey, Ben. Hey, Richard. How are you powered today? I'm powered by Polyp Lab. And it's not just, it's not always just products. It's almost like a feeling, like a good down home like your mom just made you an apple pie sort of feeling that's yeah. what it feels like to be powered by polyp lab yeah and and i today we're talking about reefroids when you open them it does smell like my mom's apple pie and my mom used to bake pies with plankton so it makes a lot of sense uh reefroids is one of the powdered foods that's in my go-to staple of powdered foods for feeding my sps corals and my nps corals and my baby corals reefroids powered by polyp lab wherever good reef roid things are sold like our other sponsors check them out you should just stop talking yes that's always the best i will also add a bit that i think picking the fish matters so when i talk about that i got a little um uh, fiji rabbit fish and an african uh hippo tang i didn't just you know, have someone ship them to me or go to some store or have some kid next door, bring me fish from their tank. No, no, I don't want any of that shit. I like to go, you know, unless I really trust the vendor, I like to go to the store and there's only a couple stores that I go to and I look at the animals. So the fish that I just got had been at aquatic collection for months. And then I fed them and they were all ate like gangbusters. And I looked at all the tanks around them and I watched for 10 minutes and didn't see anything that concerned me so much in the behavior of the rest of the fish. I went, I'm taking you guys home and I'm putting you right into my tank. Yeah, uh, I mean, I could call my story on that too, right? Sure. Just to play devil's advocate. So I legit, I'll send it just to you so you can hand it off to Snowman. I legitimately have videos from the night before. So Let's cut to the chase. But eventually I got velvet in the tank after I QT these fuckers for having yay. QT them. They got they got better. Yay. Put them back in the tank. And now somehow I had fucking velvet. I have video of let's just say 6 p.m. on Tuesday feeding the fish and they're eating like gangbusters. Absolutely going nuts. A video from the next day. Not moving, breathing sure. heavy like four of them just dead on the sand like it's just a massacre what the fuck happened so you gotta just kind of understand what are you willing to deal with right like i i don't know if there's a right answer here it's very personal like risk tolerance kind of like balancing act so like am i like are you stupid for QTing? no maybe it fits your profile are you dumb for not QTing? no i'm fucking jealous you can just but go to the store and buy a fish and go home Right, it's great. But it's not. It, but I do want to just. I'm sorry, Ben. No, it's okay. not just go to the store and buy something. It's go to the store and observe, 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 and fucking walk away if you see something that makes you go, huh? No, totally. Yeah, okay. It's like you go to the store and you want to buy a fucking apple and squeeze it. If it's squishy, don't buy that one. 
right? Exactly. Like, same kind but of- also, Aaron, what you're doing, w- would you would you really call that quarantining or are you observing? Are you actively adding um, prophylactic medications in, in on, on a certain regiment? Yeah, so my in my kind of what's our MO, I don't know what to call it. My my MO is I don't want to do any of that shit. So the first tank that I set up that you guys saw, I had purchased two clownfish from a local store. I'd gone back and forth to the store for weeks and I'd see those two clowns there. They're cute, like all that kind of shit, whatever. Got the tank set up, waited for it to cycle, you know, finally green light, it cycled, added some more bacteria just in case. And then I was like, cool, I'm going to buy these clowns. And I was like, you know what? Let me also get a little 10 gallon and like observe them. So I bought them and I did the observation thing on those dudes because I was too nervous, scared or whatever to do any prophylactic treatment. And I just didn't know enough at the time. Right. And it just sounded like shit. Like, you know, people say that's like, there's no method to the madness. Right. It was just like, you either know how to do it and you didn't. And they died from Brooke at like week three or something. Like they were absolutely fine for a decently long time. And I have no other fish, no cross contamination. There's no inverts. There's literally a glass box, PVC, you know, Heidi holes, you know, an ATO. That was the fanciest thing that the observation tank had and they died. So I switched after that experience to only buying fish from vendors that are do full on quarantine prophylactically and after, you know, reading a ton of shit and like, you know, meeting some of the folks that are kind of well known to kind of ha- be like front runners in this like space, I have a decent filter. I'm not an expert by any means, but like I have a decent filter of being like, OK, what this vendor is doing, unless there's a slip up, there's slip ups everywhere. Right. Like that sounds like something I'm comfortable with. As long as they're trying, like it's a if it's a person's job and they're doing it for, you know, let's say five to eight hours a day dealing with fish. That's way more than the 45 minutes to an hour I'm spending on it, right? So I just buy from those folks. It, yeah. it just scares me the random store where they proclaim <coughs> that they are they are QT these fish. And you know, I'm not trying to be a, a cynical dick. I'm just saying I'm I'm just again, I'm just skeptical of this stuff because it's like slapping green and organic on a bottle. And it's like, yeah. you know, you did quarantine them. Like, what do you mean? Oh, we had them in the back for two weeks. Did you add a chemical there prophylactically? Or no, we yeah. just watched them. Well, you're not QTing them. You're observing them, which still yeah. is fine. No, but- there's been some places I've seen that have like pretty good inventory, but they're not clear on the website of like, what is their process? And I've just fucking called them. I was like, what do you guys do? And then they rattle off what they're doing. And there's been like once or twice where, there's certain things that I think are just part of the kind of approved kind of run of the mill process that they just weren't doing. And I was like, cool, I'm not going to buy from you. Right. Move on. And the most annoying thing about buying QT fish is like inventory is like the dude, there's gonna be like four or five people that you trust uh, that do this stuff. And Hey, which one of them has that one? Like, do you have a lineatus rice ras? No, none of them do. I guess I just wait till one of you gets one, right? So that's probably the most obnoxious thing, but you know, they're all pretty nice. Like, like right, like one of my favorite fish is a Bella goby, and they're not like super like plentiful. There's a like, few dudes I know that do a good job QT that I can text and they'll get one in eventually, you know. So yeah, that's that better than than my responses to your texts, which are like damn i guess you should have qt'd everything um <laughs> when you were when you wrote to me i was like oh well, they, yeah i guess you should have done it then but the last time you didn't do it um so it's no to be clear i've never bought a fish that hasn't been quarantined by vendors that are kind of sort of known for doing it properly whatever the fuck that means and you've still got sick yeah yeah, that's that's the part I'm interested in. If yeah. uh, if 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 I ever get it together to run a Python script, I'd love to mine forms uh, for this kind of data. Who who's on QT? How many QTs have there been? How many were successful? How many weren't? How many were successful? Oh, uh, a month later. That that's yep. the kind of stuff we need to do. And it also occurs to me that I'm also thinking in just terms of bulk uh, dead fish. So I'm not sure if QT actually does anything for that. I think QT can help a vendor QTing can help the end user, but I don't think it 
does anything for the uh, for mitigating death in the chain of custody. Before I bought these two fish, I bought a little um, Vulpinus um, rabbit fish for my tank. Uh, and it had been there for a while, but it looks skinny. And I was like, I don't know, but it had been there for several months. So I thought, okay. And uh, it just faded away. So my mind goes, that fish was probably juiced, right? Because it was eating and fine and just faded away. I found it stuck to a pump. What? How are you stuck to a pump? You know, you were weak. You had to have been weak. So when I went back, I was like, okay, I don't want to get a tang. I mean, a rabbit fish that's from Indo or the Philippines because they may have been juiced. Forget about the rest of the QT thing. We know that juicing happens in those locations. We know it doesn't happen in Fiji and we know it doesn't happen in Africa. So I was like, okay, we've got the, 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 the Fijian rabbit fish that have been here for months and are fat and sassy, no skinniness and eating. I'll take one of those. And then they had Indo-Pacific uh, little quarter sized um, hippo tangs or blue tangs and the same size with African ones for more than twice the price that no one was buying because they were more than twice the price. They had been there forever. So it was like, I felt very comfortable putting those straight into the tank. And the next day they were out doing their thing. Um, so what do I mean by all that? The source of your fish might matter more than where you're getting it from. If, if cyanide is still rampant and because the, um, the trade is not transparent. We just don't have any idea. Um, then that can explain a lot of these late term problems, problems that happen after you get your animals in stock. Ben, what do you think about any of that Didn't stuff? You or someone took the piss out of me not too long ago because, I mean, obviously I'm not a store, so I don't deal in that volume I used to, but I'm a type of person that's, you know, pretty constantly ordering things. And I, I did have a couple unexplained deaths you know way after the observation got into a tank and things like wasting away and i was like what the fuck and i you know i think i've rang the bell of of juiced and someone was like man you can't say every time you fuck something up it's juiced but you know it it, it makes me think too we don't it's like we're throwing i feel like we're throwing darts in a dark dark room because we don't even know things about like organ failures of fish or you know stresses or you know obviously i hope anyone watching this and us included sitting here like it, it, you know i'm not the since i'm a business i don't go into the store and buy fish but if let me put myself in a hobby of shoes i'm doing that the first thing i'm going to ask is you know my favorite salesperson like hey man i was looking at this uh you know, regal tang over here. Can we feed it? Can I feed it? You know, and he pops out a brine shrimp cube or whatever. And, you know, I'm watching him eat. Like, I want to see things eat. I hope no one's not just going to a store and buying things without watching them eat, you know, because a starving, anxiety ridden, ridden fish. You know, um, I want to tag that down. I think we just assume, I know I do most of the time, I assume that people going to select their fish know what to look for when they're selecting fish and maybe they really don't. And even, you know, the number of times I go in where it's like, you know, my, not the number of times. So I've outgrown three, tank, three rabbit fish in my reef. Right. The, and then I need a new one. Right. And the number of every time I've gone to do that, except this last time I've had a couple of months where I couldn't get one that, 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 that I thought was, worth getting that was going to survive or even available i just, I just quarantined I, have it uh, but i'm not i i'm also not about i need instant gratification of the fish i used to yeah. be but now i'm like oh, if i don't have a uh, if i don't have a fish who cares because i there's so few stores around me um i know how they're all plumbed by now right so i know that this section is these eight tanks and it's like, I only have to look at these eight tanks. I don't have to look at the other side. But, you know, there's been lots of times where it's like, I really want this fish. But this fish up here in the same system, you know, this looks yep. hokey. And it's so much easier to go, I'm going to wait. It's not so much easier. Now it's so much easier. In the past, it was like, I need this fish. It's like, I don't. I don't need. I don't. I don't. This is, this is I don't say this is the problem. 
But this is what I try to impress upon more novice Aquarius is impulse control. You don't fucking need that fish if you have any sort of gut feeling that it's not the right time. You just don't. You can get most things. Some things are seasonal. Some things are here and there. Um, if you're getting something that rare, you know, you should be ordering it from a place that would, you know, is pre-quarantining it, like Aaron said. Hey, Aaron, to go along with your metaphor of the house thing, I sort of think like not observing or watching it eat at the store or putting it in a 20 gallon and observing it for two to three weeks before you put it in your tank. That's like buying a house and not getting a home inspection done. So you're just like, fuck yep. it. Here's my money. I don't know what's wrong with it. Or, or, yeah, by, like, or by using a home inspector that you haven't vetted in any way possible. Just yeah. some random home, ins you know, uh, uh, home inspection. How long have you been in business? A day. Oh, well, yeah. go for it. Tell you're me. my first one. You know, unless you're in San Francisco, at which point fucking just, all, all bets are off. Like it, we're not doing inspections. Buy it all cash. Fuck you. Or don't buy it. Right. Because yeah. you, you totally make sense. Yeah. I think Ben's home inspection thing is actually like of the best metaphor, right? Like you go look at the thing and you kind of do the cursory look around, right? Then there's like open the cabinetry under the, the, the kitchen faucet. Like take a like you don't need to be an expert to be like that looks like water stains, right? right. Then you get into really nitty-gritty in the weeds of like, hey, what's in the expertly inspected thing? Now you're not gonna expertly inspect every fucking fish store you go into because that's kind of weird, right? But take your time, learn, especially if you're buying from an LFS and you're not going to quarantine, you should be in less of a hurry because you can come back in a week, two weeks, three weeks, come back and see if that fish is still alive in 10 days, right? Like it might not be, right? So, and if, if it isn't, road. if it isn't, I mean, I'm just saying the stress of letting that slip through your finger, calm down, man. People have flame hawks, people have yeah. coral beauty angels. It's okay. Give it toss the dice you see a, a coral beauty maybe it's a store you go to a lot and you know ask them hey if i put a little bit of money down would you hold on to them for a week or something you know even if they won't do that whatever just come back in a week or two hey that son of a bitch is still there get it you should just stop talking yes that's always the best hey richard did you know that if you really like this show if you're watching this show and you don't you know you don't want to throw up in your mouth a little bit you can go to reefbeefpodcast.com and you can find our membership on there. You can help support us. You can help support, make more of this very entertaining stuff that we are doing. Do you mean people can become members? They can. We got a couple different levels. There's like bronze, silver, gold, and prime. We may be renaming those at some point. At least we've been talking about that since episode seven, I think. Yeah, and but it all may be a scam. They may all be the same thing. It's the same just thing. Just a different, a different color on the front. There's like, you know, bronze is like $8 per month. The, you get a one-time 10% discount on our merchandise. You get the ability to submit questions to us that we'll read on, on our podcast. And you get access to, if you go on to Discord, you get access to the members Discord chat. And then like on the next level, silver is 15, gold is 50, prime is I believe 250. Yeah, and, and you get different stuff. Yeah. The, the main thing that we like is that uh, it gets you access to the members area of the Discord, which feels really wonderful because it's kind of like everybody who is there wants to be there. Mm -hmm. And so you're not getting just like people who pot shite and then run away and say something inflammatory and split. So I really like the community and we'd like to see you there. You should just stop talking. Yes, that's always the best. So you ended up, you got ick and you ended up quarantining again. So I bought the fish. <laughs> I bought the fish all pre-quarantined. I did not quarantine snails or coral or any of that. And then the tank got ick. Not saying that the snails caused it. Something else could have fucking gone wrong. I'm not, could have I'm easily. Not sure. I don't know what happened. Right? Could have easily been on the fish. Totally. One of the quarantine vendors that are quarantining 300 fish a week. Oops. Shit happens. Tesla makes a bad car every once in a while. Things happen, right? Uh, so not blaming anybody. Got ick. So I set up like the quarantine tanks and all that kind of shit. Coppered them up. Put them back in the tank. And then that was going decent. Oh, no. And then 
until a couple like what is it a month ago or whatever i found out like you know i have velvet in the tank now oh so it i i hate velvet proper the fuckers then i got velvet so now i'm done quarantining the fish for velvet and i'm just waiting for the fallow period on the on the display oh, behind God. us behind me and for... then rich you gotta come set up my r- rock work by the way i've just <laughs> okay. left it in shells trying to catch the fish and then i'm gonna make you set it up which you oh, won't come i will i totally will i totally will during the day during the week in the mornings totally in. all right all right all right so um then i got velvet and i just coppered them again and I lost one fish during quarantine, which is pretty good, um, I think. And then for velvet. Yeah, so, well, they, I had a bunch die before I got them out of the tank. But once they hit the quarantine tanks, I had a convict tank that had always just been skinny. And I was feeding them and he ate aggressively and just stayed skinny. And then I'm sure you guys have experienced this. this is like, I swear to God, every time a fish like is going south, the night before they were fine, and the next day they're just not. It's like it's, Copper- it's never this. It's never gradual, or maybe it's our observation isn't acute enough to know that, like, hey, that one fish out of twenty is eating less today than last week. Like you might not notice it, but like it went from eating like a son of a bitch in quarantine to not eating the next day. I was like, oh fuck, he's gonna die. The next day I found him dead. So a copper band? Uh, no, a convict tank convict tank i love yeah which is notorious for getting skinny and not eating and dying so yeah i'm gonna say i'm my mind goes right to juice right to sign on because i i remember i was in the hobby in the 80s which is stupid and in the 80s everything was wild salt water was salt water fish were just hard to keep and then in the late days, it was like, oh, yeah, they're hard to keep because they catch them with poison. Of course, they're hard to keep. And the poison really just takes months for them to die. So it's like the perfect, it's perfect for the people who are selling poisoned fish. Um, and when I hear these like long term, it was doing good and then got skinny and, you know, um, and and they came from an area where there could be cyanide fishing. It makes me even more worried. The other thing I'll say is the worst disease I ever got came from a breeder who swore that they kept everything clean and nice. It's the only time I ever got brook. And, awesome. And 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 all I did with the brook was that I I used to have all these uh, cubes behind me, and all I did was isolate the cubes with the with the sick fish in it i didn't i didn't worry about everything else because it was like what am i going to do it's risk assessment right it's like i say too that usually i have a coral tank not a fish tank so if there's a fish that's got a problem and i have to destroy the reef to get it out i'm not going to um yeah. because it's a coral tank it's not a fish tank um but i think that's the same as uh, when ben was talking about like the, the newbies being impatient right it's yeah. like it's kind of like prioritization of why did you do this to begin with, right? Like you're, you know, you just stated you're into corals. You have, you know, coral porn going on behind you. You know, they're having babies and stuff like that. Like that's kind of your, your, your deal. And like the, I could, I I sympathize with like the, the new folks, you know, like, first of all, you tell me I spend thousands of dollars on the setup. Even a pretty cheap system is pretty expensive, right? You could put together a hundred gallon tank for like, let's say 400 bucks if you wanted to, right? Amazon stuff, Aquion, drill it yourself, whatever. It's doable, right? Like, so first you spend a shitload of money. Then somebody tells you like, well, it turns out rock costs more than the rest of your shit. So go buy that. And then now you got to wait a month and a half to cycle this fucking thing. Now you can't put any coral in it because the tank's not mature enough. All right, fine. Fuck, let's kick that can down the road. And then you have to get fish. You're like, cool. I just want, like, you want to do something, right? It's like, yeah, like how long are you gonna sit with this empty box in your in your room? And so I understand the impatience. Like how many people <laughs> buy a fucking camera and don't buy a lens, right? Like when no, you, no, no, wait, no, no. When no, you wait. are new in this hobby, this hobby will fuck you right in the face. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when you're old in this hobby, it'll fuck you in the face. Like I was listening to um, you know, the YouTube algorithm gods 
fed me uh, one of Sanjay's latest kind of uh, talks at Aquashella or something or another. And he was just going through his failures or whatever, right? Sanjay's pretty well known for being old school. He's done that. He's been there. He's upgraded his tank a thousand different times. He's got a big, successful tank now. And like, I, the, the one that sticks out to me is like, you know, sounded like he was a decade more seasoned vet in that thing. And he comes home from a vacation and he's like, I could smell dead coral the second I opened the garage door or something along those lines. Right? I don't want to yeah. yeah, misrepresent his story, but like, it's a fucked up hobby. Like I went to, on a ski trip just a weekend. So, you know, Friday night we went, came back home Sunday and like we had a power outage at the at the house and i was like ah oh, fuck let's see what's gonna happen right like so you know you come back home i'm worried about the fish i'm worried about the coral the cats aren't dying right like they're just there like like the neighbor kid came threw the food on the fucking floor for the cats maybe scooped up the litter probably not cats don't care whatsoever right but two frags and a clownfish they might fucking die if you're not around for the weekend right it's terrible. you need you need aaron you need to talk to richard about battery backup uh, it it's all risk assessment. It's yeah. all it's all how much you're willing to risk. And and I can't help but you know your story. I think I probably said it on episode twenty seven too. It was like, man, it'd be so much easier if if everyone started with a twenty gallon tank for six months to a year, and dealt with the, the problems there, and then went bigger. And and no one's going to do that because everybody wants it now. And it's it's such an interesting phenomenon. And I but, worry that the idea of telling somebody who's never kept animals before, and now it's like, now you've got to QT all this stuff too. So you've got to spend all this money on this other stuff um, that might not even work at the end. It's It seems like an impossible hurdle. Yeah, see, I'm I'm way newer here than you guys are, right? I've been doing this maybe four or five years now. I don't know if I buy the whole twenty gallon tank thing, right? Like, so what's twenty gallons buy you that two hundred doesn't buy you, right? It it keeps it's, you it it. Okay. Oh, you have you're going to answer your own question. I'm sorry, I thought you were asking. No, the, I think the practical thing is a fifty percent water change is fucking easy. Right. So there's Every a lot other easy problem you're going to get. Like you're going to get fucking. Bryopsis, you can get in a small tank, you can get in a big tank. You're going to yeah. get velvet, you can get in a big tank, you a small tank. Bermitted smells, fucking both of them, right? Aptasia, I don't know what the the learning curve wise, like, sure, maybe you're saving money on two part, right? Like, but like, it's the just, problems you're going to encounter that can't be fixed with, like, let, I mean, a 20 gallon tank, honestly, if you're fast enough, you can drain it to the fucking bottom and do 100% water change, right? right? You put your two fit clownfish in a fucking coffee mug. Exactly. Go go buck wild, but how many things does a hundred percent water change address that turn out to be like the real big fuck ups that we deal with, right? A lot. Well, I mean, we're talking about fish disease and shit right now, right? Like, so some of the other ones, like Mark's issue with like his tank that you know you guys helped sleuth out with the salt gone bad, right? Yeah, that would be easier. Do a hundred percent water change and kind of reset, but like. Verminids aren't going away. They're still it's, there. Velvet's it's, still there. It's it's not necessarily that calculus. It's that the entire picture is more manageable on a smaller system. It just is, right? If you need to catch the fish out, it's just easier. Yep. If you know, yep. if you need to set up a QT tank, it's smaller than what you need for your 200 gallon tank because you only have three fish. Um, yeah. And and it makes you go slower because it's smaller. Um, it's like you're into guitars, right? It's like, you know, should you buy I, I basses, right? So should I buy a fucking old school, awesome Stingray bass for, for $5,000? Or should yes. I get the freaking Sterling that sounds fine and perfect to me and cost me 300 bucks? My, Which my should friend, I start with? My friend owns Ernie Ball. You should buy both of them right away and make him more money. Your friend owes Ernie Ball because I'm, I'm looking for a five string now. Um, yeah, that's great, true. Sterling, great. Sterling is Ernie's kid. Yeah. Great bases. Great. They're the best. They're, They're the just best. great. Um, New sponsor, Ernie Ball. Oh, no, that would be amazing. I, so I think it's not just for QT about a smaller tank. It's 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 the whole thing about slow your roll, slow down, relax. This is 
it's a hobby. You need to learn it. You can't just, but, but now we're just fighting human nature. So I don't even know what the right answer there is. But okay. Let me say something for a little bit. You got to fight human nature. So the, the, the other thing that I preach that falls on deaf ears to newer hobbyists is because, so the trick is like, you don't know how long someone just started keeping saltwater aquariums a year from now, they might be onto a different hobby. Okay. But the tricky thing is, let's say they get a hundred gallon aquarium. So, you know, there's some stocking space there. What I don't like to see, which sounds crazy from a, a, like if I ran a store is, you know, they would get some fish. Okay. Can I come back in next week and get some more fish? Okay. How about next week? Can I come in again and get some more? I don't like that. That's not what I want to see. You know, if I owned a store, I want to see someone keep coming in. So I'm selling them fish. But if I'm being moralistic and actually helpful to someone, like I would, I would say that take two years, three years to, you know, what, what, what is even a time period to stock your 100? Just slow your goddamn roll. Make a list of the things that you want and casually get them from time to time. But again, I know what you're saying, like fighting human nature is like standing in a river and asking it to go the other direction. But I, I have, when I worked in stores, asked people to slow down in this or that. Did they? Not always. Some of them did listen to me. But it's just, you know, you got in this batch of fish. And you, you, we all know the hill that fish go through from point A to point B to point C to my house. Let them catch a fucking breath. Because then you're falling right behind that with another batch of fish. And, and then another batch of fish. And then you're telling me that your tank died of velvet. Well, no fucking shit. Pulse yeah. it in slower. Give the I mean, fish guy, a fucking second to breathe. I mean, it hits one of the topics you guys have discussed in the, in the, in like many episodes in the past is like, if the shit cost a lot more, it would force that to happen. Even if they're not captive bred, if they're not QT, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Like, the fact that you can go to a store and get like, you know, in like, you know, a, a fish you like for 30, 40 bucks. Right. Is like, if it was 150, you might not be be buying seven at a time. Right. Like, so you go to the store, you have a hundred gallon tank, like, fuck yeah, I cycled or I pretended I cycled. I threw in some fritz in there, whatever. Right. Like I'm ready to go for 200 bucks. You can get a bunch of fish and stock that shit up right away. Right. So yeah, if you know things were more expensive, you'd have to do a little bit more diligence. But I don't know if the economics of an LFS would even make sense at that point. Yeah, how many people are buying three hundred dollar yellow tanks? I was I was contacted by a dude that set up a like a forty gallon. And I was like a sixty gallon saltwater tank. Cycled it, whatever he thinks he cycled it. The first thing he put in there was three hell fricks. You know, firefish gobies, hell fricks. And he killed him. And then I was the first person he called, you know, and the whole time I'm like slap myself to not like giggle on the phone. I'm like, let's be professional here. But I was like, dude. And he's like, and I asked him though, I was like, why did you choose hell fricks? And he's like, oh, my son really liked them. They're really pretty. And I was like, it's just not the thing you want to start off on the left foot on. Now you taught your son to kill pretty things. <laughs> now he's into killing. Aaron, That's serial killers are made, right? That's they right. Kill yes. How would you to sum up this section of, of what, everything we've been talking about, Aaron? And then we'll, we'll move along. I got parasites. I fucking coppered the fish. I got parasites again. I'm coppering the fish again. So I don't know what to <laughs> tell you, right? Like, it's just like, understand kind of like, where are you getting your fish from? Like, understand what the health impacts are of quarantining them, not quarantining them. Research, find out if there's vendors that, you know, you're happy to support that are quarantine vendors. And if not, you know, dump and pray. YOLO. <laughs> see, what, like, fucking see what happens. So I'm going to throw, let me throw in an anecdote for you. Uh, because this is something you guys have talked about that I thought maybe you'd get, you'd, you'd find interesting is I had some mysterious fish deaths before I found out conclusively that I had velvet in the tank. But it was spread throughout like a month and a half. But like, I get a new couple fish and like one of them would go south and you're like, eh. It's a fish in a bag that came out of a box, like something's going to go wrong, et cetera. So after, uh, at some point I chemi cleaned my tank, right? So skimmers off, UV is off, ozone is off, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The fish acting bad 
or looking like they were succumbing to disease didn't happen until I'd shut off UV ozone filtration, et cetera, because of uh, forced to do so post chemi clean treatment because Rich's suggestions on how to deal with cyano weren't working. Um, so <laughs> I had to just go, go nuke auction. You did it wrong. Uh, and then and I, I did you didn't wrong. do this. And then, uh, no, and then, like, as you know, the fish are in quarantine tanks and all, all that kind of shit. Like, it's a good opportunity to do the odds and ends. Get in your sump and rearrange that thing that was fucking annoying, right? Because now you can turn the filtration off for two hours without worrying about, you know, causing, you know, life harm to the fish, etc. So, you know, I changed out my heater because one of them was underpowered. Just dumb shit like that. And I was like, it's been about a year. Let me clean. Let me get a new UV bulb. And the quartz sleeve on my UV was just brown. Like you could not see through it whatsoever. So I definitely think that there was definitely something there that like, hey, maybe management would work. It's just, I had shut off one of the major management kind of tools. And literally right after that is when the, the, the fish started having hardship. So I guess there's no proof in any pudding because we don't have pudding here. Yeah. But um, mm, I think pretty. management is an option and, and uh, shouldn't be something that you think you have to go, you know, uh, all the way towards like copper and being mad scientists. Like some of those techniques, I think, probably work and or at least help minimize kind of how quickly bad things can happen. Righteous. Any last words, yeah. Ben, on, on that topic? I Aaron. mean, we're not going to kill you right now. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, just get a small tank and uh, just real quick. This this is my advice. You don't have to be a QT wizard. Just get a small tank and understand it doesn't need a skimmer. It doesn't need substrate. It doesn't need all that shit. Just an easy power filter like a Seachem Tidal filter, a heater, and couplings. Um, again, you don't have to be a QT wizard. Just make it a pit stop between the store and your tank. If the shit crashes and burns... Let it crash and burn in the fucking 30 gallon aquarium, not in your display. Again, you don't have to do prophylactic chemicals, all this shit. Just get fish, bring them home, let them chill in there for a couple of weeks. Everyone looks good. Boom, you're going in there. That's all. If you just make that little pit stop, it's sort of like a stop gap. You can stop a ton of shit without being a fucking chemical wizard. Yeah, I've got to yeah. set up again. <clears throat> I changed how these drain, right? It, this tank that I'm pointing at and the top, right behind me that used to overflow to drain that's how the water change is being done I'm not doing it that way for various reasons now it's a peri pump pumping the water out i could just as easily have it pump that water into an observation tank it would you know a 10 gallon tank i could stick it under the house and then yeah. you know when i bring home fish they just go there uh so that's on the list of things to do because yeah, you, just you don't even need a fucking filter you're nope. constantly draining through yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's getting 30 liters a day. So who cares? So that's how my little frag tank works now. I have auto water change from, used to be from the DT just out the street, right? Like just yeah. waste uh, to the, like the side of the house where the garbage cans are. But now they just go into the water change from the, uh, from the DT to like a 15 gallon little frag tank and from the frag tank out to the street. So the frag tank now essentially should have essentially the same chemistry as the dt because it's getting like a 30 watt percent water paint change daily so that makes things easier but i think it does hint on like one of the things that's like a not talked about thing for reef keeping that makes life easy is space having space is a world of fucking difference if you don't have room like if you're in a condo you can't even do the simple thing ben said of having like the 10 gallon waypoint right like if you're you know covid you're working from home now you know because you never you don't have to go back to the office now the spare room is an office like you run out of room etc like space definitely should be a consideration because the easier you make the briefing the better it is for everything involved and not having enough room is one of the unsung demons i think uh i think on that note i think we're calling the show i think we're skipping the beefs i think we don't need them i think we've we beefed enough in, in talking to Aaron about his system. So, uh, uh, Aaron, thank you so much for being here. Really appreciate it. It's always good to talk to you and, um, get in touch with me and I'll come over and help with your rock. Cause that sounds like fun. Uh, sounds good. Thanks guys. 
Ben, you are a golden god, uh, even though you're a hippie. And uh, we'd like to thank uh, everyone who helped make the show possible, which is saltwateraquarium.com, which is Champion Lighting and Supply, which is Polyp Lab. And of course, I want to thank the beefers for making uh, making us keep doing this. We really appreciate that. And I want to thank, again, Snowman. Without Snowman editing our stuff, nothing, and making sure it gets published, uh, probably nothing would be happening. So thank you, Snowman. Thank you, Beefers. Thank you, sponsors. Thank you, Aaron and Ben. I love you, baby. Stay moist, everyone. Namaste. This episode hosted by Richard Ross and Ben Johnson. Produced by Richard Ross and Snowman. Directed and edited by Snowman. Thanks to our prime and gold level beefers, Monk, Adam S., Scott O., Bay Area Reefers, Robert S., Jason C., Rich P., James B., Ryan H., Scott C., and Russell. Are you for scuba? Are you for scuba? Um, entertain yourself. <laughs> you know, that's something I can do. That's something I'm quite good at. But so anyways, Richard is probably going to grab his penis pump. But well, no, I mean, I think he's grabbing a tube. That's going to be my guess. He's grabbing like a small diameter tube, which can also be used as a penis pump. But I mean, we all knew that, right? I didn't but, actually I didn't actually think you talk. I did. <laughs> uh, do you speak English? Yeah, they really wanted the information, but it was like, uh, don't. Yeah, so a Japanese guy went over to him and was like, don't, don't yell that. That's just. Oh, know, man. Weird. And he was like, well, I just need to know. I was like, yeah. And then we got in a whole thing and it was like, let me fix it. There is no logic here. It's just going to piss people off. Don't do it. Just like you don't yell gay anymore. What you deserve is me going, hey, this is pissing me off. I look like an Amish fucking. Like a, a Turkish Amish. Like Amish. Hello. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, uh, oh, I can't remember. Bro, you're not on point. I'm not. I'm going to let Aaron in. We'll just do the show. Yes. <laughs> Aaron, your last name to me feels like a Star Trek bad race of people. That's what we are. Have you not seen the news? Like all the UFO sightings and shit? We've been here, dude. Captain, the Sarkissians are here. What? We haven't seen them since before the neutral zone was made. <laughs> Batten down the hatches. I've never seen Star Trek in my life. What? Okay, never. this interview's over. What Done. the fuck is wrong with you? You're older I mean, than me, man. It was on at like 11 p.m. or something wait, on the UHF channels. Do you mean any any Star Trek or the original Star Trek? All of the above, dude. I haven't even like the new ones. I just dude. didn't watch them. Dude, so, Captain Picard had a fucking fish tank. Fuck you. Saltwater tank. In space? What year yes. was that? Was that and maintenance thing that Look, one Look, little people. Come here. The Sarkissians here. are here. Come here, sit. I Can totally you say, bad, say bad words for them. This is Ben. Hello. Say I love beef and then run away. Okay, cool. Go, go, go. Mommy's going to get you ready for the birthday party. Get out of here. Do you notice they all have that same thing on the bridge of their nose? They almost look human, but they just have a little bump. They're, they're like pre-Klingons. Yeah, can you look more ethnic? Maybe Sarkessian? Yeah. There's like four Armenians in the world. I'm one of them. This is like every minority checkbox you can get. <laughs> Wait, you're Armenian? Why? Everybody that ends in IAN is Armenian, dude. Why are you Armenian? Even even people named Ian. Yeah, Ar especially yeah. them. They're just the lazy ones that didn't get like the prefix down. They have they have no arms. They're just doing the suffix. I was lucky I had one laying around. Oh, it's Grant. Is no, that that's Grant? a neighborhood kid. What the hell? He it, get out of here, you you Richard. He, he watches Reef Me for real. Oh, uh, what's his name? Jonathan. Jonathan. Hi. Hey, what's up? Nothing. Why do you watch Reef Beef? Because it's because it's cool. Oh, well, then I cannot make fun of you. You are a prince. Uh, go to the go to the refrigerator and get yourself a juice or a ice cream beer or a beer.
Dang. <laughs> Bro. I'm subscribed. All right. Thanks, man. <laughs> How old is he? He's like 10 or 11. Subscribe to Reef Beep. See? He's 11. Wait. Confirmation. It's it's the parents. Yes. Sorry. Now the spot. Oh, you're juicing the stats with your own kids. Yes. <laughs> Polyp Lab's fucking out. <laughs> Jonathan is in. Jonathan, the neighbor kid, is in. Uh, I am so sorry because we, no, that, I think I was just saying check your check your for is she subscribed? Is your daughter subscribed? She's okay. totally subscribed. I tried she, to get her to swear as an intro for you. She was sushi. Is okay. she a random damsel? She's just some kid we found at the park. <laughs> as as long as she's subscribed, I don't mind her coming in during the yeah. show. Look, Aaron, what are you, the person who has never seen a Star Trek episode, talking about space for? The other space, Ben. The oh, space. not outer space. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, there's three of them. There's the room, the place up in the sky, and then that long key on the keyboard. Those are all spaces. In, in Inner Space, that movie with uh, Randy Quaid and... Uh, um, Martin Short. Martin Short, yeah. Yeah. Never seen Star Trek? The fuck out of here. What the hell is wrong with that piece of poop? Yeah, I think I'm either going to go kite or go to sleep. I'm not sure. Oh, do, do, yeah, definitely do the, don't do those at the same time.